My name is Michael Harney. I'm known otherwise as the rubber man or sometimes the needle guy or the guy that tested you at the jail or maybe spoke at one of your treatment centers or a college class. I work at the Western North Carolina AIDS Project that's been in existence since 1986. And it began when years ago people came back to Asheville uh, living with HIV and AIDS and uh, went to O. Henry's and that was uh, one of the meeting grounds in town. So when people needed some help with uh, resources living at home here now with AIDS, families that discriminated against them or didn't understand them very well, uh, O'Henry's got together a group of people in town. They used the resources to help those people and then came together and decided they needed to create an organization like the Western North Carolina AIDS Project. So the Western North Carolina AIDS Project has three main components. Uh, most importantly, case management. So people with HIV and AIDS can get case management at our office by either going to our website, www.wincap, that's wncap.org, or calling even the United Way 211 and finding out more about us. We have a second area of uh, expertise, and that's in the prevention education department. So that's in the department, uh, that's the department in which I work. Uh, we provide educational forums in the community. Uh, we can adapt them to your needs. We can do trainings for uh, licensed clinicians or um, counselors in the community. We can do youth groups. We can do uh, old groups, religious groups. It doesn't matter. We can provide education for you. The third area of our organization is volunteers. Uh, so uh, volunteers are very important for things like Dining Out for Life, which comes up every uh, April. Uh, we have an auction, the Raise Your Hand auction every fall, and we al always need volunteers for that. And throughout the year, there are things like the Buddy Program, where if you want to be a volunteer and work with somebody who's living with HIV and AIDS, they can find uh, a match for you to become a buddy. And uh, lastly, on Saturdays, Loving Food Resources provides food boxes to people who are living with HIV and AIDS or other terminal illnesses, and they oftentimes need rides home, or they may need a ride to the food bank. So those are some of the ideas for volunteer services that we have. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, that's the CDC, estimates that there are about 56,300 new HIV infections that occur every year in this country, the United States of America. There are approximately 33 million people living with HIV worldwide. And so if every uh, year there are 56,000 people being infected in this state, I'll tell you that last year, that is the year uh, 2008, there were uh, a reported 2,650 new case reports of HIV in North Carolina. So if we divided 50 states into 56,300, that's a roughly about 1,100 per state. So you can see that North Carolina is reporting better than two states worth and getting on three states worth. Something's wrong. I don't know whether it's because we're in the South, it's because we're not able to talk about the ways that we get HIV or how to prevent it, Re you know, realistically. I don't know if it's because we're not speaking to young people. When I compare STDs like chlamydia, last year in North Carolina, there were 37,499 new case reports of chlamydia. Those case reports, 75% of those were among people under 24 years of age. And among the age group of 15 to 19 year olds, there was almost 14,000 case reports of chlamydia. So if young people are getting chlamydia and gonorrhea or syphilis or other STDs, they're putting themselves at the same risk for HIV. We must speak realistically to our young people. We must talk to them about their anatomy, about their bodies, and how to protect themselves and negotiate what they're willing to do or not willing to do. I want to inform young people so that they can make informed decisions. Be they informed decisions is all that I ask. Overall, there are some 300,000 people from this country who have uh, died of AIDS-related causes. There are um, thought to be a million 100,000 people living with HIV or AIDS right now in our country. Um, every year, people are dying. Every year at our office, the Western North Carolina AIDS Project, 
we see between probably five and ten uh, AIDS deaths. Uh, every year is a little bit different. Um, and sometimes it's older people, sometimes younger people, uh, a variety of racial makeups. Uh, women now represent 50% of all new HIV infections. It really has become a different face of AIDS over these last you know, 30 years of the epidemic. So a really important thing to also know is that African Americans are disproportionately being affected by HIV, as are Latino Hispanics, as are Native Americans and Asian Pacific Islanders. But the African American population, both men and women right now, are being hit the hardest. Young African American men who have sex with men, or you might think of them as gay men, they may or may not identify that way, they are the leading um, a group of people being infected with HIV, but African American women of all women being infected are the most infected. And I really think that it's important that we educate our children. Don't use mommy or daddy's razors. We don't use other people's toothbrushes. We want to never share needles, not for drugs, not for vitamins, not for steroids, not for hormones. Never share needles with anybody. If you don't have access to needles, then you get in touch with the Needle Exchange Program of Asheville, or you call the United Way 211 and find out where there is a needle exchange around you, or call the CDC hotline 1-800-CDC-INFO and find out where there's a needle exchange so that you can access clean needles. You never share equipment like cookers or cotton or anything like that where there is blood because where there's blood there is infection, there is bio, uh, biohazardous material. Asked what are the four bodily fluids that transmit HIV, they include men's ejaculate, so semen, any of the vaginal fluids that come from the vagina, it's blood and it's breast milk. Most of the time, people think the first thing out of their mouths is saliva. And so saliva is not considered one of the bodily fluids that transmits HIV. But the caveat is, how is your oral hygiene? Do you have sores? Do you have a herpes sore? Do you have a cut in your mouth? Do you have um, bleeding gums? Or have you perhaps uh, gone and flossed your teeth or brushed your teeth uh, and, and created a portal of entry for men's ejaculate, for the vaginal fluids that may come out, or other blood or um, breast milk. So those are the bodily fluids that transmit it. But how does it get into our bodies? So we talk about sexual transmission, that is oral sex. Your mouth to someone's penis, your mouth to someone's vagina, or you may uh, also get it by uh, vaginal sex, that's the penis and the vagina coming in contact, or the vagina and the vagina coming in contact. You may get it from anal sex, and not just men who have sex with men uh, have anal sex. Sometimes heterosexual couples also have anal sex. You have to understand that you're tearing tissue, that you need to prevent HIV by putting on condoms, so the excuse that, well, condoms don't fit me, they really do fit. And there are extra large condoms. There are even extra, extra large condoms if necessary. There are female condoms. Sometimes people have an allergic reaction to latex, so there are polyurethane condoms. There are now polyisoprene condoms that are non-latex. And if you need those, you can call us at the Western North Carolina AIDS Project or call the CDC hotline once again and find out where you can find free condoms. We have those available. There's also um, oral uh, vaginal contact that we're talking about, you may want to use something called a dental dam. Now, in your dentist's office, they use it to isolate an area in the mouth where uh, the dentist is working to, to keep your teeth uh, dry in that area. But we use it as a barrier for oral contact with the vaginal uh, area or uh, oral anal contact. Sometimes people do that too. If you can't find a dental dam, get some saran wrap and wrap it up. You see what I mean?